guys, it's Kevin again, my review for the highly anticipated It Chapter 2. And what It Chapter 2 is essentially about is basically 27 years after the uh, first movie, the entire gang has basically gone their separate ways. They are now grown adults. However, uh, since it has been 27 years, Pennywise is now showing up back in Derry and... Um, basically, because of this, uh, Mike Hanlon being the only one that has remained in there, he gets the whole group uh, back again, basically to hopefully bring down Pennywise once and for all, but also help them uh, finally, um, you know, recover from their childhood trauma that they have since repressed, and that's really all I'm going to say. So, It Chapter 2 overall, I was obviously very hyped for this film. I mean, I adore the first movie from 2017. I think it was such an effective, but also a really entertaining um, film for, for sure. It was a really great ode to 80s and nostalgia and things like that, but also was a lot more fun than you really would expect it to be. Uh, the, the cast, I mean, was fantastic. And the way they left things off, I was very excited to see how they would, um, you know, wrap it all up in the second movie. And and especially re-watching the uh, miniseries, which I mean, in, in preparation for this film, I rewatched both the 2017 film and the miniseries. I mean, there's a lot that they can do better because technology has changed over time. You know, it, it doesn't have to be as sanitized as it was on ABC and things like that. I mean, that miniseries, look, the first half is, is fine, but the second half is, is pretty terrible. And again, it's mainly because... It was on ABC, and there was a lot of things that they just couldn't show. It was also the 90s, so they had to be, like, really cheesy and things like that. Um, so because of that, I was very excited to see how It Chapter 2 would be. I thought it was in a very good position. And I have to say, overall, I was very satisfied by It Chapter 2. It's not as amazing as I would want it to be. This is a good continuation for sure, but it's not great. It definitely is a little underwhelming, but for the most part, I do think it is an overall satisfying uh, conclusion to this series. But we're just getting to right now, starting off with the cast. And I mean, going into this film, that's definitely going to be one of the biggest draws for sure. You know, unlike the first one, we have tons of recognizable talent here, some real A-listers, and just like the first film, which pretty much was anchored by our cast, this one is no exception. Everyone here does a very strong job. Uh, James McAvoy as Bill, I mean, he's always great as an actor, and he definitely does do a really good job as his character. Bill is someone who he still has deep regret for what has happened uh, in the past and things like that, and I think McAvoy did a really great job of conveying that guilt that he really does feel. He still does very much feel like that leader of the group and you really do care for him because of that but he also had I think all of the mannerisms down and McAvoy is one of those actors who he just completely transforms into a character and that's no exception when it comes to Bill I mean he had everything down pat the stuttering um you know, just the different mannerisms of Bill. I mean, he definitely embodied that quite well, and I was overall very impressed by him here. This is another really great performance from McAvoy, for sure. However, easily the standout of this entire film is Bill Hader as a character of Richie Tozer, who looked... I really liked Finn Wolfhard in the first film. I thought he was very entertaining, for sure. But Hader makes this character his own, definitely. He takes this character and makes him one of the best uh, in this entire series. I absolutely loved what he was able to do here. Uh, just the, He had the wit that Richie had, you know, in the first film. He had that very well. He had the dryness of it all very well, too. I mean, they definitely do give him a lot of humor, and he's a lot of fun. But he also gives the role a lot more authenticity. Certain things that were kind of debatable when it came to Richie. You know, Hader does um, emphasize on it more. He expands upon it more in his acting, and he really does do a great job here, particularly in the third act here. I mean, I've heard people say, oh, he is Oscar worthy, and I'm like, oh, there's no way he's, he's that great. But no, he actually really is that great. And look, it's not going to happen. It obviously wouldn't happen. But if it were up to me, 
Yeah, I would definitely put him in contention for that Best Supporting Actor uh, category because I really do think he is that great here. He absolutely kills it in this role. It really does show the range that Hayter does have as a performer. I've always known he has it in him, uh, but this film more than ever just shows how talented of an actor he really is, and I think he absolutely killed it here, giving such a incredibly uh, emotional... It was a funny but also a, a much more emotional performance than you're really expecting here. And the rest of the adult losers also do a really great job. Jessica Chastain, as expected, is great. She's pretty much great in everything, and that's definitely still the case here. Isaiah Mustafa, I thought was really great. James Ranson uh, was so good in this film. I really liked him here as Adult Eddie. I thought he did a really great job. Uh, Jay Ryan, I mean, really all of the adult losers, they just have this really great chemistry to them. They work so well together. Um, pretty much from the first scene, it really just leaps off the screen, and you really do feel it for sure. But of course, uh, I mean, I really can't talk about this film without talking about Bill Skarsgård, who I mean, again, yes, in the first film, he definitely was the big standout for sure. And while I do think Hater rivals him in this film, uh, he, st Skarsgård still is a force to be reckoned with, and he absolutely kills it as Pennywise. Pennywise in this film, he is out for blood, he is far more relentless, there are just things he's doing that he wasn't doing in the first film, and I really love what Skarsgård did here. He's just as creepy, but he also is just so fun. You can just tell that Skarsgård is having the time of his life here, really just capturing the embodiment and overall just uh just uh ferociousness of pennywise but also someone who is very showy and flamboyant in that way and i think he just did a really great job here he does have more to do as his character overall and after this film i really hope scars guard continues to get more work i love talking about him in this role but I want to see him do more than just this role. I know he did things like Hemlock Grove and things like that, but he is truly a real talent, and I really hope after this film he continues to get more challenging roles like this, because if anything, both of these films have shown he absolutely has the capability to pull it off, and I hope that does not go unnoticed by uh, Hollywood overall. But now let's get to the directing and the writing here, which I mean, just like the first one, uh, the directing here is really great by Andy Muschietti. He does a really great job with this film, but what I think he did an even better job with this time is knowing what worked in the first film, because what was great about the first one was that, yes, it was primarily a horror film, but... For the first half, it really wasn't. It was more of like a comedy in that way, like more of just a fun uh, sort of adventure film for these kids, and then eventually transitioned into a full-on horror film. And he takes the same approach here, except obviously it's a little bit different this time. Um, but I will say, in terms of uh, comedy, there's just as much of it as it was in the first film. There might even be a little bit more here, and I think for the most part it worked really well. Something that Muschietti does really great with the comedy is that he knows what not to and what to take seriously, and I think he does a really great job with that. Particularly in the third act, there's a lot of gags that you think would be done for horror, but they actually really play up the comedy quite well, and I actually do think it works really well here, not just because of actors like Bill Hader and James Ranson's comedic timing, but also just because of Muschietti's directing here. He does a really great job with that stuff, but also the horror. I will say, this movie is nowhere near as scary as the first one was. The first one I thought was far more creepy in that way, and definitely gave me a more eerie feeling, but this film still does have its creepy moments, and he definitely doesn't hold back when it comes to that. There's definitely a sense of, um, this unrelenting sense of fear throughout it. There's definitely a sense of eeriness throughout it, and I think he overall did a really good job with that here. I was still very impressed by uh, the horror, but he also does a really good job with the drama. There's a little bit more drama going on in this movie, and I think that also was really well done. The emotion, I thought, was really good. And overall, I thought it was well helmed by him for the most part. I thought his directing was really good here. You can tell he knows where he wants the story to go, and 
and it, it definitely didn't feel like much had changed. Like, there are things in this film that feel significantly more of a downgrade compared to the first film, but his directing isn't one of them. I still think he did a really good job, and the writing here is really good still, too, although that is where we get into some of my more negatives, but I'll get into the things I really liked about the writing first. Um, like I said, just seeing all of these uh, characters again, seeing the hardships they've been through, and where they decide to take them, I think is a really interesting idea. I don't want to get into it too much, but essentially the trauma that these characters faced in the first film, they're not exactly over it. They still have to take that final step and overcome it, and I thought that was actually really well done, particularly for the characters of Bill and Richie. I think out of the all the characters, these two are the best written. I think they go through the most in this movie. Their arcs feel the most completed, and I think they did some really great work with them. Bill's a character who he still is very much blaming himself for Georgie's death. A lot of what's happened, he is blaming himself for. He feels like he's the sole reason all this is happening to them. So you really do feel for him because of that. You want him to get out of this situation, and eventually, when we see why he feels this guilt, because it's not just because of what happened to Richie, there's uh, of what happened to Georgie, there's a little bit more there that we didn't know. Uh, it's that much more effective, and I thought they did a really good job with writing this character, and especially where they end up taking him. Um, I don't want to get into it too much, but like I said, he feels a lot of regret, and he's trying to do whatever he can to prevent this from ever happening again. He wants to make sure that Pennywise, you know, doesn't um, get to the kids of today the way he did to them, and I thought they did a really good job with writing him for sure. But it's also with Richie. I mean, Richie's a character who, in the first one, yes, he was a lot of fun, but there was also this sense that there was something that he was hiding. And without spoiling much, we do very much get an answer here. And it's a very effective one. It makes this character far much richer and complex than you would have expected him to be. And I thought they did a really good job with that. When this film is taking something from the first film and trying to capitalize on it a bit and trying to give you a more of a clear idea of where they were going, uh, it works fairly well. And I thought that that was very solid for sure. Also, the character of Mike. He has more to do this time around as well. Um, and I do think they did a good job with that. Although I will admit, it does kind of feel like that they only gave him more because people complained in the first movie that they gave, that they gave Ben his uh, story. So here, yes, he is the librarian, he's much more involved in that stuff, and it does work, it just feels a little weird for the character to go in this direction, but I, I appreciate the fact that he had more to do this time around. I, I think overall, they did a good job with that. Um, ben and Bev as well, they get more into that storyline as well, something that we also saw hinted at um, in the first movie, we definitely get into that more, and I really did appreciate that. So, yeah, the writing is definitely very well done, especially once you get into the Pennywise of it all. I mean, you really do feel his presence throughout the movie. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, Pennywise doesn't really feel like a threat, and I would very much disagree. Even though, yes, he is sporadic in the first half of this movie, in the second and third act, he's in it a lot more, and I think they do a really good job with getting you to fear his presence. You know, you know he's going to show Show up. We know what he's capable of at this point. It's it's that much more uh, tension filled because we know what he can do. We know what he is capable of in that way. So you're just waiting for him to show up. And I think they did a good job with that uh, writing wise here for the most part. And like I said, in terms of comedy and horror, there's definitely isn't a shortage of both here. The comedy is even more consistent, especially when it comes to Richie. I mean, just so many hilarious lines. from. There's also this really great gag with Bill. Bill is now this writer, and I don't want to get into it too much, but I thought it was very clever. And I thought they did a really good job with that gag for sure. I really did appreciate that. But the horror as well, again, they scale back on it a little bit more. The movie's not as scary, but it is a lot of fun and there's a lot of really creepy moments here and so overall it is a pretty solid story of you know them trying to overcome their trauma and childhood fears and things like that and I think they do a good job with that overall for the most part uh the cinematography here though I think is is better but it also isn't as good 
Uh, the cinematography here, this is where we start to get into some of my negatives, because if we're talking from a practical standpoint, it is really great. I do think they did a really good job with that. Pennywise still looks very creepy. He still has that really great look to him and things like that. Um, and then the adults, I mean, the casting on them is really great, especially when we go from seeing how they were as kids to seeing how they were as adults. I think they do a really good job with that. So cinematography is really good there, and especially in the third act of this film, that's when it really does shine. There's a lot of really great imagery there. Uh, there's also a funhouse sequence in the second act of this film, and pretty much the reason that scene is so terrifying is because of um, this. Uh, it is because of the cinematography. I mean, they really do get a lot. They're they're not afraid to get a lot more weird and out there, and a lot of that is due to how they manipulate uh, certain scenes and that funhouse scene's a very good example of that cinematography wise however where the film doesn't really work is anything that involves visual effects yet yeah, not the best uh, i will say it right here in terms of cgi pretty much everything in this film looks like shit it really does um and look the first film the cgi i didn't think was that great either but it wasn't as noticeable here it's a lot more noticeable in fact it feels like a huge downgrade and i don't really know what happened but the cgi just doesn't look that great here there's one that doesn't look as bad but most of it doesn't really look very good and then of course the elephant in the room the de-aging, uh, yeah, it's not good. It's really not good at all. I mean, the second that we see the first, uh, flashback, it just feels off. Everyone looks a lot more artificial, and their faces themselves, uh, look a lot clearer and, like, cleaner than they were in the first film. It just, it looks very odd. Bev is the only one that I don't think had any de-aging done to her because Sophia Lillis hasn't really aged at all. But everyone else, it is incredibly noticeable. And look, I did eventually start to get used to it, but it's not good at all. I have seen far better uh, de-aging in, like, the Marvel films and things like that. And it's, it's weird how we have a film like Captain Marvel where the de-aging isn't really noticeable at all. Um, and then you go here, and it is so noticeable. And I, I maybe if they hadn't say it was de-aging, it wouldn't be as noticeable to me, but... It just felt off. It didn't really work here at all, and I don't think they did as great of a job with that. I also don't really understand why they didn't just shoot these scenes, like, when they were filming the first film. Like, they had to have known that this was probably going to be a hit. Like, why didn't they just do it then? I don't really understand. So, yeah, cinematography, again, it's a mixed bag overall. There's some things that work really well. Like I said, scenes that are practical or scenes that are trying to scare you, they do a good job with. But any CGI stuff really kind of felt flat here uh the score i did think was still really great this time around although it is repetitive in terms of they use the same score from the first movie there are some things that they add especially towards the end that i did think were really great and i think benjamin wallfish overall still did a really good job composing the score the editing is where we get to my main flaws uh with this movie this is where we're really going to start to get into my negatives uh i really don't think this film is as paced well as the first one this film is nearly three hours long and I just don't think it utilized that time all that well. You would think because it's three hours long um, in the first act of this movie, they'd really take the time in fleshing out all these characters, you know, seeing what they've done for the past 27 years. You know, uh, a lot of them have gotten married and things like that. They all have different jobs, but we really don't. We get a brief thing with each of them, and I mean, it's... It's not even scenes, it's a scene of each of them in their personal lives before they're eventually called back to Derry, and it's just not nearly as effective as it could have been. I think they could have done a better job with, like, peppering that throughout the movie, um, and that was definitely very disappointing to me. And that causes the first act to feel fairly rushed. Once the gang eventually meets up with each other and we get more of the Losers Club, uh, that's when I really started to like the movie. But I will say, the first, like, 20 minutes, it definitely feels really rushed. And I think they could have done a much better job with that. The second act, though, that's really when things took a nosedive for me. At first, I didn't really have a problem with it. The second act, without spoiling too much, the entire gang ends up splitting up. They're all kind of doing their own separate thing. So we get, like, a scene of them uh, in a flashback and things like that. And I, I'm fine with the movie having the flashbacks. I don't really understand 
Um, you know, I, I didn't really have a problem with that being a thing, but I really do feel that they overused it here. A lot of these flashbacks are just restating things from the first film that we already knew. There were even points where it seemed like they didn't think that the audience watched the first film because they were telling us what already happened. It's like, all right, we've already learned that. What they do with Eddie, for example, it's effective, but it's something that we already knew. Um, it's not something we really need to see more of. And I think for characters like Bill and uh, Richie, they definitely do benefit from this. You know, uh, I think, uh, you know, Ben as well, he does benefit from this. But many of the other characters, it just feels like they did it because they wanted to do at least one with each member of the Losers Club. And again, as much as I love the kids... I don't really think they needed to do this. I don't really think they needed to, um, you know, have one flashback scene for each of them. It just felt a little bit shoehorned in. And I've talked to all my friends about this, and we all pretty much agree. Um, they should have just done this in the uh, first chapter. Like, this is all stuff they could have just shown in the first movie. I also don't really understand why they didn't just shoot these scenes like, when they were filming the first film. Like, they had to have known that this was probably going to be a hit. Like, why didn't they just do it then? I don't really understand. Again, that ties back to the whole de-aging thing. But again, the editing really wasn't great there. But the third act, ho, 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 the third act is everything that I pretty much want it to be. It more than makes up for the kind of slog of the second act. Because I really was starting to feel the runtime there. And so because of this, it caused the film to feel a little bit repetitive and monotonous, and I was actually starting to feel the runtime. That is until, I would say, the funhouse scene. Once we get to that scene, I was pretty much locked in from there. Um, the third act of this movie especially, though, I mean, they pull out all the stops, definitely. If you want to talk about a crazy third act, I mean... This film will definitely deliver in that way. It delivers on scares. It delivers on just the sheer, um, just ridiculousness of it all. And I loved every single minute of it. I absolutely adore everything about the third act. I do think it is legitimately perfect. And the way they end things off is actually quite emotional. I was actually kind of close to tears with the way they were actually wrapping things up here. I thought it was very poignant. I thought it was very satisfying. And they did a really great job with it overall. And the third act more than made up for how sluggish some of the second act was for me and how rushed I think some of the first act overall was. But getting more into my negatives here, as I said, the flashbacks themselves I don't really have a problem with. It's just the use of them overall didn't really feel like they needed to be in this movie. Some of them very much did feel like deleted scenes in that way. And I know that Annie Muschietti is going to be doing a four-hour cut at some point, and I hope that when that is released that he just decides to add these in with the first chapter because here the cutting back and forth really got annoying after a while and it just didn't really work for this film as well as it could have I, I don't really think it needed to like I said be here overall um some of them again are definitely very effective some of them do work very well but a lot of them a, a, you know more than a few of them feel like they could have been cut out altogether also there is a character that they bring back I'm not going to spoil it too much but I don't really know why, uh, to be honest. I feel like this character could have been cut out from the entire movie. They really end up serving no purpose here at the end of the day, other than just being a plot device, and I don't think it was necessary. The character, yes, they had a big impact in the first film, but I don't think they needed to be back here, and that just didn't really work for me as well as I wanted to. Also, there were some characters that did feel a little bit shortchanged. Beverly especially, uh, her arc... It just isn't as fully realized as it sh could have been. I think they could have done a little bit more there. I still was overall satisfied with what they did for her, but they definitely could have given her a little bit more to do for sure. But overall, as I said, It Chapter 2 is a mostly satisfying installment. It delivers on the comedy, it delivers on the horror quite well. Even though it's not nearly as scary as the first one, there are still moments like that funhouse scene, like the climax, that are very effective in that way. You know, the chemistry between the Losers Club is still really great from all the adults. James McAvoy, Bill Hader, uh, those two, James Ranson, those three really do stick out for sure. Jessica Chastain's also really great here, of course. Um, it definitely 
and for what the film does lack in terms of CGI and in terms of some of the flashbacks, like I said, it more than makes up for in how much you care about these characters. And the film does a really good job with getting you to care for all of them. It definitely does feel over long at times for sure, and I don't think that it utilized that runtime as well as it could have, but for the most part, I am satisfied. I am satisfied with how things did wrap up here. I think they overall did a good job in paying respect to the source material, and let me just rear it, considering how ridiculous that source material is, the fact that they even pulled it off... Um, even moderately, I think is an achievement because I think most of the stuff in the second half of that book is just ridiculous. It's corny. It's really dumb. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. And the fact that this film actually works even a little bit, um, again, I think is an achievement on its own. And I definitely can't give the, I, I definitely cannot uh, praise it enough for that alone. Overall, I think if you enjoyed the first movie, I think you will at least end up really enjoying this one. This is a overall very satisfying conclusion to the series, even if it does fall flat in some respects. And so because of that, I am going to give It Chapter 2 a very generous B. I know it seemed like I had a lot of negatives with the film, and I, I didn't really. It was more just how high my expectations were. There were some things that just let me down a little. Overall, though, I, I do recommend it. I do think this is a really good, um, you know, uh, conclusion to the series. I think it's much better than people are giving it credit for, for sure. But overall, guys, if you have seen a Chapter 2, let me know what you guys thought of it. Love to hear your thoughts. And, of course, uh, which one do you prefer, the first one or the second one? Uh, I'd love to hear all that stuff. But that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in my next video. And we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.